So welcome to those of you who have joined us and to anyone who will be joining us online later. My name is Kate Melchior. I'm the Assistant Director of Education at the Massachusetts Historical Society, and I'm one of the state coordinators for History Day in Massachusetts. And I am really delighted to be part of this webinar program with History Day in Rhode Island and Vermont and Connecticut and Maine. And who am I missing? Is that everybody? That's all of us. <laughs> New Hampshire? New, uh, is New Hampshire? New, I don't think we get New Hampshire. Well, New Hampshire is part of the club. Uh, <laughs> And to all of our friends from other NHD affiliates who are joining us as well, we are um, so pleased to have you all here. And I'm very happy to introduce our colleague, Elena McNaughton from uh, the National Office, who's going to be walking us through how to build an NHD website. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Elena. Yay, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to uh, share all about NHD Web Central with you. I actually started using it about two years ago, but this summer I really went through all of our guides and our materials and really taught myself how to use the website, how to troubleshoot the biggest FAQs on our website. So I'm hoping that I can give you some tips, some workarounds, uh, some ways to make things easier uh, as we go through the session today. So I'm gonna share my screen. I have a short PowerPoint and then we'll jump into making two actual website pages. And then we can go over some of the tips that I have, some quick tricks to make things work on your website. And then I'll just share some resources with where to go to look for videos, any kind of help content, things like that. So let me share my screen. And we see a PowerPoint. Okay. All right. So getting familiar with NHC Web Central. So what I'm going to do is just go over what NHD Web Central is for those who are new who might not know what Web Central is at all. Then we'll go into how do I build an NHD Web Central homepage because we know there's some required elements on that page. We have a navigation bar on that page where we link to all of our other pages on our website. So we'll just go over how to set up that first page and then we'll go into how to link to other pages because I know this is a, a big FAQ for people. So we have a section just on linking pages and how that works. I have some tips and tricks that I've picked up uh, just to make things easier for everybody. And then we'll have some time for questions, but you can feel free to ask questions during or you can write them in the chat and we'll go through those too. So first of all, um, when I think about Web Central, I like to think about it as just a tool. So every category has its own tool. Documentary students in the documentary category have to make a 10 minute film. They need to know how to use video editing software. Not everyone will just pick it up and know how to use it. You'll have to learn how that video, video editing software works in order to take those primary and secondary sources and put them together to create your film. Exhibit students need to understand graphic design to decide how to present information on their board. They're not just going to just stick everything up there. There's a pattern or a design or just thought that goes behind how you're laying out your exhibit board. Uh, paper students use words to weave their argument together. You can't just plop in all of your quotes. <laughs> you have to know how to put everything together into that argument using your words. Performance students don't just have a 10 minute improv uh, for their performance. They need to write a script, have their stage directions, and they're learning how to do that as they prepare their performance and present it. So when you're thinking of Web Central, it's just another tool uh, that students will learn how to use in order to build and design their website. So it might not seem easy at first, you just have to read the guides, watch the videos to help you learn how to use that tool. And once you, once you start, you'll be a pro in no time at using NHD Web Central. So just keep in mind, every category is something to master for websites, it's NHD Web Central. So for those who aren't familiar, what is NHD Web Central? It is the official NHD website editor for the website category. So any student who is creating a website for an NHD contest will need to use the NHD Web Central website builder. So this is the website you'll go to to put all of your pieces together um, to create your website. We don't have uh, Google Sites or anything like that. 
you'll just need to use um, NHG Web Central to submit to the website category in any of our regional, state, or the national contest. So today we're going to be looking at this sample website. These are some students who created a website last year and they won Outstanding Affiliate. And I think it's a nice website. It's simple in design, but it shows all the different features of NHG Web Central. And it's very clean, classic looking, nothing's too difficult to do. So we're going to look at, at that one as our example. And then we'll go ahead and remake their homepage and link it to their second page. So without further ado, let's see the website. Do we see a website? Huck, yeah, okay. So this is our sample website that we're going to work on today. So these students you can see have a title at the top of their page. They have a navigation bar. They have a photo that they put together with all of their, um, all these sources that they found. They have their required information and they have this enter button, which takes you to your next page. So a lot of students like to do those little buttons at the bottom of the page to navigate between pages on their website. That's not required. I think that's an NHD myth, um, but students can choose to use those little next and previous buttons to go from page to page. But we also have the auto navigation bar that will take students and your audience, your judges from page to page. So we'll go over how to do both of those features when we're recreating these pages. But I wanted to make sure we showed a website that had those buttons because I know they're very popular. Um, if you would like to build a website along with me or you'd like to do it later, I am going to put a link in the chat to a folder where you should be able to access the photos and the text for this first page. And if you'd like to see the sample site, I'll put it in here too. Okay, so I'm gonna start from, from the very, very beginning and show you how to register for a website, what it will look like, how to get started, everything like that. So we're starting on square one, we're at website.nhd.org and we're going to click register. The first thing you'll have to do is put in your birthday. This is because any student who's 13 or younger will need to have parental permission to use NHD Web Central. Students who are older do not need um, to have a parent sign on with them. And then you'll just enter first name, last name, an email, a username, and a password. Accept the terms of service, which can be read at the bottom. And then log into your account. And it will look like this. So start your website is if you are an individual website student, you can click here and start your site. If you have a group that already has created a site, you can link to it here. Every website comes with an eight digit site key. You just put in that eight digit site key that your other group members already have, and you can link to your website. But we're just gonna start now. And this is what it will look like. So you'll see your site key right here, that eight digit number I was just talking about. That's very important to note because you'll need that when you register for any NHD contest. There's also the full URL here. This bar here will show you how many megabytes you have remaining on your website because there is a limit according to the NHD rulebook of 100 megabytes of storage on your site. So this green bar will go down, it'll be turned yellow um, as you're filling up content on your website. So just keep in mind when you're uploading any MP4 files, any MP3 files, photo files, that you don't wanna choose like 10 huge TIFF photo files, those are the really high resolution files, those will take up a lot of space on your website. So you'll want to look for lower resolution files or compressed files like JPEGs to take up less space on your website. Then we have edit site, which is what we'll click in a few minutes, which will open us to the website builder. 
view site will show you what your site looks like to your audience. So if you want to preview your site without being in the builder, you can do it there. And then authorized users just shows you uh, my, my fake name for this website is sample account. Your name would be there. Um, and if you have any group members, they would be down there as well. Up here, we have removed site. So if you don't want to do your website anymore or you accidentally created two, you just click remove site to delete this account. But we're going to jump into the exciting part, uh, which is edit site, which opens up the website builder. All the new features for this year will automatically pop up for you. So new releases, what happened this year, edits wise to the web, website builder. Um, you can also link to our NHD Web Central help library here. You can also go to the about tab where you'll see additional help. So do you wanna review the rules for this category? You can come to the rule book. Do you wanna read the guide and watch the videos? You can go here. We have a page of frequently asked questions that we're continuing to add questions to all the time. You can go there to read the FAQs. If you wanna submit an FAQ, you can do it there as well. If you don't want this little box to pop up every single time you refresh the page, you can turn off show on start because <laughs> otherwise every time you refresh the page, it'll pop right back up. And now we have a blank website. So new for this year, you'll see this body box. It's highlighted in a thin blue square. This is what was previously known as the container. And this is where you drag and drop the content to build your website. The first few, few years of Web Central, this could have been deleted out, which is what made the websites look a little wonky sometimes, like the text would be over here, the image would be over here. And if you looked at it at one screen, it would look a little different than if you looked at it on another screen. So this container is now permanent. It cannot be deleted off the website, no matter what. <laughs> so all of your content is just gonna get dragged and dropped into this box. This box will help it look the same, no matter which kind of uh, web uh, browser you're looking at it on, which kind of computer versus laptop versus tablet. This will help keep the website, keep its shape and keep everything organized on the page nice and neat. So. I'm just going to go back to our original site. This is the one we're going to be recreating. And you'll notice that it has an interesting background image. So when I recreate this background, I'll need to upload some files so that I can put an image in the background. Uh, students can choose to just up, do an, a color in the background. New for this year, if you go to the palette icon, you can select themes for across all of your website pages. This is new. Before, students would have to select colors for every single page. Now, if they just want to use one of these preset theme templates, they'll just click on it and then click save. And then every page will either be the green template, the blue template, yellow template, pink template. Students can get very creative and customize everything. So you'll see here, you can customize your font, your background, your menu, so they can get very creative with how they want it to look. But for our younger students or our newer students, using a preset color theme across all of the pages might just be um, helpful. I know it's more helpful to me. <laughs> That's why I thought it would be a good idea to add this here. Um, but we want to add an image in our background. And we need to upload some files onto our website in order to do that. So to upload files to your website, you're going to go to this Manage Files feature which allows you to just double click and it opens up your files on your computer. So I'm just going to upload a few files, save time. And once I upload files into my library, they'll stay there. So you'll see these are all the files I just uploaded. And here's another tip. <laughs> if you are uh, trying to save space on your website, because your, your storage is getting dangerously high, you're up close to that 100 megabytes, you don't want to delete anything out of your library that you use on your website because it will disappear from your website. So if you have these images somewhere on your site and you delete them out of your library, 
they will be deleted off of your site. So we, I know we have a lot of FAQs, like where did my picture go? Uh, you'll wanna make sure you haven't deleted it out of your file library, because this is what your website uses to pull those files onto the pages. So if you delete it here, it's deleted across the site. So I am going to now go back to my palette icon. I could choose a preset theme, but I wanna choose a background image. So I'm going to go to this background section and I'm going to go to the file that I named website background. And I am going to click save. And now I have this nice um, historic paper looking background, but you'll notice that the container is white. And if we go back to this sample website, we don't have that big white box in the middle. It's kind of see-through. So to do that, I'm going back to the palette icon and we have an option for container color. So that's that middle box where everything lives. You can make it white, you can make it any color that you want, or you can choose to make it transparent to let that background image shine through. So I'm going to make mine transparent, click save, save again, refresh. 99% um, of the little minor issues you may have in Web Central is because you haven't saved and refreshed. Um, so if you notice a change that you made isn't appearing on your page, try saving and refreshing your page. And 99% of the time, that'll fix whatever you just did. So um, now we have my background, we have my transparent uh, container. So I'm gonna go back and look at this page. And I have this image title at the top, and I have my auto navigation bar. So we'll add that next. So anything that you're adding into your website, you're going to go to these little blocks. And these are your, think of them as your building blocks. So you're building your website with all of these different tools and they're all drag and drop. So I am gonna drag and drop an image into my page. And I wanna use this title banner, but it is to the, to the left. So I don't want it to be to the left. I want it to be nice and centered. So to do what I just did, I highlighted the box. I went to font and I, there's a text align section, left, center, right, or justify. I put center and it centered the image. This is a little tricky because to change the alignment of any image, you need to make sure the whole box is highlighted and go to font. So that's like a little tip that I learned while I was working on it this summer. Um, when in doubt, go to font and you'll see the align feature here and that will help you align that photo. Victoria, did you raise your hand? I did. <laughs> so, so just a question, because the students, they chose to make this title as, a, as an image and, mm -hmm. and I saw that it was a transparent image. So it it's just the, the words like a picture. Right. Could this also be done through text? If you, I mean, I know this is a fancy font where it says puck, but could this also be done as a writing text in a box? Yes. Um, so like a title written as text? Yeah. Yes. So if we wanted to recreate this as um, text, we could just pull in, we have H1, H2, and H3. These are three different types of headers. Um, it just, H1 is the biggest header, H2 a little smaller, H3 is a little smaller. So if I dragged and dropped this in here and just, I recreated the title. They can do it totally like that. And then you have your, your um, text uh, header and they can get very creative with these fonts so they don't have to upload an image. They can go put their text box in, write the text, and then they have options to change the font. So if we wanted to do Comic Sans or script, they can change the size of the font. So they can get creative with how they do that. They'll just need to use those header one, two, three, which are preset to those big sizes, but it will still work if they just drag and drop text in and wanted to do it this way and not use one of those little header boxes. So they can do it 
that way. They can play around with the, the font and everything. These H1, H2, H3 are just like preset to be bigger and like a header. So that's why it's easier to use those for a title, but they can use a text box too. If they forget or don't see that, I'm not sure what that means. They can still add text with this and just mess around with the sizing and everything like that. Lots of options. And if we don't want anything, we just delete it out. So we have our header image right here. If we go back to the site, you can faintly see, it's actually very hard to see on the screen, but there are two little lines here and there's an auto navigation bar in between. So we're going back to blocks and there's something called a horizontal rule, which is what makes that horizontal line. Something similar is in Google Docs, Microsoft Word, um, you just drag and drop in your horizontal line and you can very faintly see it here. So that's set, we add it in our line. The next thing we wanna add in is the navigation bar. Now the navigation bar has gotten a lot better if you've been with Web Central for a few years now. Um, it's an auto navigation bar. So as soon as you put it onto your website page, it'll automatically update as you add additional pages. So what I mean by that is, if I go here to my auto navigation block, drag and drop it under that horizontal line. Right now, it automatically has home because we have a home page. This page is called home. So the first page is always just set as the home page. And then as you add additional pages, it will just add the title of that page to this auto navigation bar. So students don't have to worry about linking it to other pages or linking, adding in the new pages as they create them, it will automatically do it for them. So um, they just, students just have to remember to put that auto navigation bar on every page, but I'll show you a tip a little later on how to make sure the navigation bar is on every page. But you see here that the background of the navigation bar is white and I want mine to be see-through like we did here. So we're just gonna go back to the palette because this is where most of your design is for your website. And there's a section called menu. You can set the font color of your menu, background color, menu item color. That just means when, if there's a drop down, what color that is. Um, so I'm gonna make mine transparent, save, and now we have a transparent uh, auto navigation bar. And one last thing with the nav bar, I am not loving that home is lowercase. I want it to be all uppercase H-O-M-E. So to make any edits to your navigation bar, you just double click on it. It will open up this little editor. And I only have one page to edit right now. So I'm gonna click it and make home all capital letters. I'm gonna click set, save, close. Now look, this is a great example. It looks like nothing happened. <laughs> I am going to save, refresh, ta-da. <laughs> so if you have students who are panicking, it's not working, save and refresh. And 99% of the time, your change has been made. So we have our home navigation bar. And as we add a, a page, you'll see it appear in the navigation bar a little later. And the next thing we have to do is add a horizontal line underneath our navigation bar because that's what the students had on their site. So I'm just going to drag and drop it here. So a lot of a lot of this now that the container is made permanent, they can't delete it. Just dragging and dropping elements is what you're doing. So once you kind of know what elements you want on your site, like the images or if you want to add horizontal lines, you're just dragging and dropping the content right on top of each other onto that onto that page. And now let's take a look at, go back to this website. They have this nice big image and they have a um, citation at the bottom. So we are going to add our image with citation. There's two ways to do this. You can either choose the image block or there's an image and citation block. So I don't know why you wouldn't just use this all the time because all photos need to have a citation. Um, so we drag and drop it right onto our page. I'm going to double click it, which opens up my file library. And I've already uploaded my content. But if you didn't, you could just double click here to open up all the files on your computer. And this is their homepage image. It looks pretty big. 
but don't worry, we can just click on it and it'll put these little dots on your image and you can just drag it to be the size that you want. There is not a photo editor on NHD Web Central. So any kind of photo editing that students want to do will have to be done out of Web Central and then they can just upload the edited image into their website. That's a question we get a lot. So there is no automatic uh, photo editor. The only thing you can do is resize an image, um, but it's like that. It's not a fancy um, image resize or just dragging it smaller. So if students want to do anything fancier, do it outside of the system and then upload the edited photo or video or sound clip into Web Central. So the same thing goes for videos and sound clips. You can't cut videos in Web Central, can't cut sound clips in Web Central. You have to upload them as, as you want them on your site. So now I'm going to add my image citation. So you're just clicking on the text and typing it in. And then if students want to bold or italicize, they can do that here, but they can also do it here under font and play around with that. And then just because we haven't saved in a while, save and refresh. So now just going back to this page, we have the required text. So name, category, process paper, student composed words, and multimedia. We want to add that here. So what we're going to do is drag and drop a text underneath our image. Why do you want to do this? Ooh. There we go. All right. There's a little green bar that appears, and the green bar will show you where you're uh, trying to put your element. So you can play around with where it is, but you should see that little green bar there. And that kind of gives you an idea of where you're dragging and dropping it onto the page and what the order will be. It's a little quick though, so <laughs> sometimes you have to play around with it a little bit. So now we're going to add the text. I'm going to take off the student name. Um, and I want it to be centered, so I'm going to go to font and center. If you have students who aren't necessarily comfortable with all of these different settings here, I have found that when I was recreating this website, I could get by with just using the font section. So if they are trying to open up all of these other things, um, they're not really sure what it is. Font is really where you're going 99% of the time to make photo justification edits, text edits, font edits. You're opening up that font piece most of the time when making any kind of page edits. So when in doubt, check the font. <laughs> And if I want to change the font, I think these students used Comic Sans. I'm going to go here and change it to Comic Sans. Font size, this is like you would use in Google Docs or in Microsoft Word. It's preset to medium, but we're not, we don't really know what that means. We're used to using, you know, 12 point font, 14 point font, 1620. So you can type that in. Um, so if I want my font to be 16, if I want to be 20, you can, students can play around with the size. It's preset to medium, but they can just put a number in there to do whatever size they'd like to do. Um, and then if you want to change the font to color, students can drag and drop and find what color they'd like. These students used burgundy, so they can do that. Um, this is a very interesting thing that I learned because I wasn't really familiar with these number letter color codes. Um, and I hope this works. Yeah, <laughs> so if you type in any basic color, it'll just go automatically to that color. So if you don't really know about color codes, if you don't want to learn, write those numbers down, if you don't want to use the preset themes that I showed you at the beginning, you can type in basic colors and it will just automatically select those colors for you. So that is a tip I learned over the summer. I thought, thought that was very handy. <laughs> Doesn't work for all colors, but your basic eight or so 
uh, will appear when you just type in the color that you want. So they can get creative with however many colors they want to use, but they can just type in a color here. After you've selected a color, it will appear in this little menu here. So it is nice that you won't have to like try to color match the exact color that you used. If you used like a burgundy, um, it will just appear in this little bar up here. So you can go back and use a frequently used font. So now I have my required information. The last thing is that little enter button, which will link to my second page. So to do that, I'm going back to blocks because that's where everything is. And I'm going to link block. Now, uh, this is a little trick that I can demonstrate here. Um, down at the bottom, there are these things called easy layouts. And this are, are just different ways you can lay out your pages. We haven't gotten to this yet, but if you wanna have a page that has two columns, if you wanna to, want to have a page that has three columns, you just drag and drop these elements onto your page and it will preset those columns for you. Um, at the bottom, there's something called a flex box. I find these are the most flexible to use because that's what, why they're flex boxes. Um, you can really mess with the, and play with the shape of things, play with, how they look. So I always recommend using a flex box and they come in handy for, for other things. So I'll show you first without a flex box and then with a flex box. So if I wanna add this little enter site button at the bottom of my page, I can drag a link block here. Now it is stuck in the bottom left corner. I can't move it anywhere else because I don't have it in a container. If I click it, I can, I can't move it. I don't want it there. So I need to give it something so I can center it and because I want it in the in the middle. So to do that, I am going to go back to my blocks. I'm going to take a flex box. I'm going to drag and drop it underneath my text. So now you can see a flex box has these little two columns here. Now I'm going to drag the link block into one of the columns. I don't need the other column. So I'm just going to trash it. So now I have the link block in this blue box. Now, when I go to font, I can move it around. So when in doubt, if a student can't move something around how they want it, throw in a flex box. It'll come as two columns. They can delete one. And it really allows them to be flexible with how they want something laid out on the page. <laughs> that took me a while to figure out, so I'm a big fan of the flex box. <laughs> um, so once you have it where you want it on the page, enter. And you can, like everything else, change the font color, change the font, change uh, the color of the box. So if I want to put it in Comic Sans, like the students have it. If I want to make it that red colored ooh, to match the text, <laughs> I'll keep it in white. Um, and then I'll click save. And the last thing we'll have to do for a link block is link it to a, another page. Um, so we don't have another page. So we'll have to make a page first and then I'll show you how to link it to that page. So to do that, we're going to go to home, open manage pages. And this is where you'll continue to add new pages as you go through building your website. So right now we only have the home page. So we're going to create some new pages. Page name and title. Page name is the name that you'll see in this drop down menu. So it can be like a clue for you on what that page is, or you can name it whatever you want. It's just what you're going to see and the computer is going to use to pull information. Uh, so if you're hyperlinking, that's what the, the page you'll hyperlink um, will be called. But you also want that text to appear in your navigation bar, and you might want that text to be a little nicer or a little different than what you have in that drop down menu. So, for example, if I on the back end want to call it thesis page, that's what I'll put in. But if in the navigation bar I want it to be thesis, all capital letters, that's what I'll put in title. Then when you're making a new page, you have the option to pick a template 
So we have three set templates, the basic template, a photo gallery template, and a splash template. So these students can use and just drag and drop their own images in, upload their own text in here. It's, help, it's made to help it be a little easier to design pages if students just want to use a preset design. You don't have to use it, but definitely an option. If you don't want to use it, you can leave it as none. Then there's this thing called duplicate page, which I'm a fan of, especially when I was recreating this website, because if you'll notice on every page, they have that title at the top and they have the navigation bar with the two horizontal lines. So I don't want to redo that every single time I make a new page. So what I can do is select the home page to duplicate. So that'll bring all of that over to this next page. So I'm going to click add page. I'm going to click save, refresh, and look what appeared in my navigation bar. So you don't have to worry about it. As soon as you save, refresh, your new page will appear in your navigation bar for you. You don't have to worry about it. And now we're going back down here. We're clicking our link block and there's a little hyperlink button. And now I have the thesis page here that I can link to and save and close. So if you add any of those link blocks, just make sure to, that the links work <laughs> so that you're not stuck on a page or anything like that. So now we have a thesis page and it looks identical to our first page. All we have to do is just delete out these old elements that we don't want on this page. And we have that title at the top. I don't know why it did not center. And uh, we have the navigation bar with the two horizontal lines. So that's my workaround. So I don't have to keep recreating those elements on the, every page. It's just, I'm du duplicating the first page, taking out everything I don't want on that page and voila. And the navigation bar stays. So you don't have to worry about that. So now I just wanted to go over some of the common questions students have about like, how do I upload a video? How do I upload an MP3? How do I add my, my PDF? All of those sorts of things. So you always are going back to blocks and you have the embed multimedia. Embed multimedia does PDFs does videos, does MP, uh, MP3, MP4 files. Another big question we get is, can you upload YouTube videos to NHD Web Central? No, <laughs> that is against the rules. You can't embed any external links. Why? Because if the person who owns that YouTube video decides to take it down, it no longer exists on your website. So if you put a YouTube video on there and you it's time for judging. The judges are looking at your website. The video doesn't work because the video doesn't exist anymore. So it's to keep you safe and so the judges can see your content. Another reason that we don't allow embedded external material is because we can't tell how big that file size is. So it may exceed the 100 megabyte file size limit that's required of every NHD Web Central project. So any video you might find off of the internet might be this huge file and you're just embedding it onto your website. We have no idea how big it is. So that's why if you're uploading any content, it has to be uploaded as an MP4 file because then we can measure how big that file is because as soon as it goes onto your website as an MP4 file, it counts towards that green bar that tracks your, your 100 megabytes. Same with MP3 files. So enough talk. <laughs> Let's show how we do that. So you drag and drop embed multimedia. You'll get this kind of scary message, Final file source missing, double click to set the source. Double click opens up your documents. Let's see if I have a PDF handy. Great. So here is a PDF, but if I don't want it here, click here once to click here once to select element or double click to change source. So clicking here once, we'll put those little blue dots all around the outside. Double click, you can change if you don't want, if you pick the wrong PDF or whatever, you can just double click to reopen your file library and pick a new um, PDF. Click once to make it bigger. So if you want it to span your whole page, you can do that. 
So we'll save and we can kind of look at it in preview mode. It looks something like this. So, and then you can play around with the view. Sometimes it does that weird thing. Yeah, Kate, I see your hand is raised. Hey, um, so if I'm a student and I wanna have a video of say a news clip or something that I did find on YouTube, is the best procedure to like download that video and make sure it's whatever size I want it to be and then to upload it as opposed to like putting in a link straight to whatever it has on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I know you're not supposed to download things off of YouTube, but I know it can be done. Uh, so if you find something that you really like and you can't find it on like the Library of Congress or National Archives, because I know that sometimes you can download um, compressed video files off of there, you can download um, MP4s off of other websites and then re-upload them to your site as a static MP4, not as a rogue video link. So you can do that. Thank you. So now, yes, no, Kate's hand is not raised anymore. Okay. <laughs> all right. So that's a PDF. That's the most common one because all students have to have an uploaded PDF to their website to do their annotated bibliography and process paper. Um, some students do both on the same page. Some students do one page for each. If you wanted to do two on a page, you could go back to that flex box and we have two columns so i could go back to embed multimedia and put one in each and this would put the the two files next to each other it wouldn't be as big as i just showed you but it can be done you would just have to shrink them to fit into the container and then upload them next to each other. And then of course you can center them if you want, or you can just um, keep them as is, or you can stretch them to fit here. A source of frustration uh, is you have to remember to click here you don't, you can't click the element. So like, say I want to make this a different size. I'm clicking on it, nothing's happening. I have to click up here. <laughs> so you have to click this little box in order to get that up. It took me a while. So click here once. It literally is telling you to click here um, to get that or to double click it to open up um, your file library to upload something new. So that's how PDFs uploading works. If I want to upload other content, I would go into my computer, look for a video. Do I have a small video that I can upload? Let's try it. So if I want to upload a video, it'll look like this. I shot this one on my phone. That's why it's horizontal or vertical. Um, but if it's a horizontal video, it'll fill up this whole space here. And then just like the PDFs, click here. You can make it big. You can make it small. Um, but that's how you upload video content. And then judges will just click play here. It's not like they'll have to open up YouTube or an external link to go onto another site to view it. They can just view it right here on the site. They can edit the volume, make it full screen. Lots of different options there. They don't have to view it in that tiny little window. And then if I wanted to add an MP3 file, it would be the same, the same way. All right. So I know we're running out of time. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump to... Um, one more thing I wanted to show you is our PowerPoint. So, um, just going over some of the things that I've already said, just to repeat them, if we have some extra time, we can go over a few more elements in Web Central. Um, but like I mentioned, the container on each page cannot be deleted. That was the major source of issues the past few years. So as I said, cannot delete the, the container, which should keep all the content prettier on the page. Um, I showed you those preset color palettes. So if students don't wanna do the 
background image like I showed you. And if we have time, I'll show you what it looks like if we add a preset color palette. Uh, they can choose to do that so they don't have to worry about changing their page colors and everything like that. And this summer, I added short, short video tutorials. Um, so what I did was I built a website in 20 minutes, a very simple website. So students can watch the full 20 minute video if they want, but I broke it down into one minute chunks as a YouTube playlist. So you can watch me like create a page, put a picture on the page, put a navigation bar on the page, like just put every single element on the page. Um, and uploading a PDF. So everything is a lot shorter. We still have those longer instructions in the NHG Web Central Guide. We got a lot of feedback last year that we wanted shorter videos. So we put one out there. It's on our YouTube, it's a YouTube playlist. It's also linked on nhg.org slash NHG Web Central. It's right on the homepage of Web Central on our website. Tips and tricks. Um, I've explained some of these as we went along today. Keep a cool head. <laughs> Just save and refresh the page and 99% of the time the problem is resolved. So if you don't see a change made right away, try saving and refreshing and hopefully it makes that change. If not, open it back up because another big issue is, um, is not saving. So make sure you're saving and refreshing, not just refreshing. <laughs> Write all of your text for your website in a Google Doc or a Word document. This will help you in multiple ways. You'll have the text in two places just in case. Using Google or Word, there's a word counter built in. NHG Web Central does not have a word counter built in. Uh, so you will use either Google Docs or Word Doc to um, count all of your student composed words. And then finally, it will help you prevent typos because there's no spell check in NHG Web Central. So I recommend doing everything off and then building it in after you've done the spell check, after you've counted your words and everything like that. When in doubt, use a flex box. If you don't like how something looks on your page, pop in a flex box. This will allow you to be much more flexible with the alignment of your images, your text, whatever you're putting in there, your link blocks. You can play more with the sizing of everything and so much more. So you can get really creative with flex boxes. So I always recommend those. And I showed you a little bit about this um, as I was uploading files, but I found it's very helpful to use creative file names when you're uploading media. It's so much easier to find the images or videos or sound clips when the file name is something easy to remember and not just a string of letters. Um, so for example, if you wanted to use an image as your website background, like I did, I named the file website background. So I could easily just find it in a list and I knew that I was uploading the right file. So I just found it useful to upload or make sure you name all of your files, something easy for you to understand if you have to pick it from a list. Because sometimes when you're uploading elements, you'll have to pick it from a drop down menu. And it's really hard to do that if the file's name's like 123657GE. So <laughs> you won't know what that is. So does anybody have any questions about what we went over? what I didn't go over, what they want to see, anything. But thank you so much for this, Elena, because I know that both now and as a recording, this is gonna be such an incredible resource. I feel like I've got a much better understanding of how to use NHD Web Central now. Um, so Good. Anyone with questions, I'm also monitoring the chat. So if you'd prefer to drop questions in there, feel free. I just got a new computer, so I don't have a, a MP3 file clip on my computer. Otherwise, I would show you how to do that. But it's it literally looks like the video. It just has this bottom section only. So judges can click play. They can make it bigger. They can adjust the volume. So I actually have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I confess part of this is just I, I took a quick look at NHD Web Central, but wasn't sure if I could distinguish this. Are all of the materials, the, the guides on NHD Web Central, or on, on the, the page on NHD's website, are those all for this with the updates, or are any of the guides still talking about the old format? All the guides are updated. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So if you go to, I'll just show it for the video, nhd.org slash NHD Web Central. Um, this is the landing page. So starting your website, link to the rule book, link to the instructional materials, the FAQ page. And here's the playlists that I was talking about. So the first one is the longer playlists, um, which we put out last year. I just updated them over the summer, the ones that needed updated. Um, these are just longer. It's just me reading the instructions basically and showing how to, what all the buttons do, how all that works. This is the full walkthrough of how to create a website where I did the 20 minute build a website and then cut the video into one minute segments. You can watch the full 20 minutes. I believe this first one is the full 20 minutes, but if you open up the playlist, you can see the shortened, the shortened videos there. You can directly go to Web Central from our website. And then these blue buttons on the side just take you into the instructional guides and the step-by-step -step videos, or you can just download the complete guide here. And then we have our FAQ page. Woohoo! And then this right here will link you to NHD Web Central. And then our YouTube channel. This is just a, what it looks like. So adding a title, adding an auto nav, adding a background, adding text. And you can see like 37 seconds, a minute and three seconds, a minute and 20 seconds. So those are much shorter than the videos that go along with the instructions that are very much more um, reading the instructions and showing how everything works. Any other questions? For folks who are teachers, are there things that your students struggle with? Or if we have students on the call, are there any kind of big questions that you don't think we addressed here? Just a quick logistical question. Oh, sorry, Darlene. Um, I didn't raise my hand. Um, for the under 13s, is it just, a, what does that look like? Is it a checkbox that the parents need to do? They will do their first name, last name, email, and there's like a little message that's like them consenting to the students using this the system. So they'll have to put in just first name, last name, email. Um, sometimes the teachers do it for the students, but the parents should should do it. So they and they'll get an email confirming that the student like did create this site. So they have like a record that it happened in case a student just puts in their email and doesn't tell them. So they'll get an email that says like, your kid did this. <laughs> My question is, um, anybody with their, their URL can see it, right? And as soon yeah. as it's up there, it's theoretically public? It's theoretically public, but it can't be found. Yeah, okay. So it's not like it's going to show up on Google or show up anywhere. Like students have to have that full URL with the eight digit key okay. to be able to get to it. So it's like not searchable on the internet. Okay. And then if they wanted to like log out and test it all, they can just put in the URL and see it as a viewer would see it or a judge would see it. Yeah. They okay. can also click this little um, eyeball icon right here, which opens up a preview. So they could just make sure all their links work and like, oh. does the video work? Or can I go back to the home page? Did I link everything right? Um, so they can do that too, if they just want to see how everything looks. Great, I see it from Cindy. So one of the questions um, that I would have is, is there a specific um, internet browser that works best or um, is there a difference between making a website on a PC versus a Mac um, versus a tablet? Those are questions that I would like to know before I have students start working on them. Yes. So last year, there was an issue with Firefox browsers, um, but that has since been resolved. Um, so as of right now, I don't know of any browsers that work better than others. It wasn't like that in the past, but we've worked to make sure that all browsers will 
accept it. It's just because every browser is constantly changing their uh, what they allow, what they do. So it, it can be a little tricky that way, which is why students might have had difficulty in the past. But I know that we've worked to get all browsers able to use it so that both students can use any browser and judges can view it from any browser and they're all seeing the same content. Macs and PCs work the same. We added tablets last year. So we do have a lot of schools that use tablets instead of laptops or Chromebooks in the classroom. So it is tablet um, accessible. Um, and they did make some updates to make it easier to use for tablets last year um, as we had more and more students using it and testing it. So as of now, we're totally tablet friendly. All different types of tablets, not just iPads. <laughs> That's a great question. And if anything, if you ever have any issues with tablets or browsers not working, um, students can always contact us through the um, NHT Web Central um, help page, which is just a little question mark. And you can contact us here. Or there is a little um, on their homepage, a contact icon. So they'll come to me and then I will um, talk with NHG Web Central if there's an issue with a browser or anything like that. But we worked through a lot of those last year, so hopefully we're all good to go. I haven't heard anything so far. All right, any last questions before we wrap up or anything else you'd like to see demonstrated before we head out today? All right. Thank you so much, Elena. This was incredibly helpful. Um, and for everyone on the call, we're going to be um, getting this video formatted. It should be uploaded at least to uh, the Massachusetts webpage within the next few weeks. And I'm also gonna send it out to my colleagues so they can add it to their pages or they can use our link, whichever they prefer. Um, so this will be made available and we'll email everybody who registered for this course and let you know when it goes up. Um, if you have any additional questions um, that you forgot and think of immediately after this, you can always email me um, or you can get in touch. Elena, what would be the best uh, nationals email if they have additional follow-up questions? IT at NHD.org. All right. Um, and my email, if you prefer to reach out to me, is education at masshist.org. And I'm just going to drop both of those in the chat really quickly. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Elena, for this wonderful presentation. Um, and we hope that you will come join us for some of our other webinars. Uh, the New England Cooperation has a whole slate of them this fall and winter. Uh, the next one is coming up actually next week on November 10th, and it's going to be about local history research, how to do a project on something in your own neck of the woods. Um, and then later on this fall, we're going to have some other programs, including sort of um, doing projects with cultural sensitivity, how to create a documentary using documentary um, tools and tricks, uh, thinking about historical argumentation, working on a bibliography, and a whole bunch of other things. And as always, these will all be recorded and shared on all of our websites as well. So thank you once again for joining us. It's great to see you all, and we hope to see you next time. That was great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>